Thank you, Chairwoman Waters, Ranking Member McHenry, members of the committee. I'm happy to discuss with the committee my purchases of GameStop shares and my discussions of their fair value on social media. It is true that my investment in that company multiplied in value many times. For that, I feel enormously fortunate. I also believe the current price of the shares demonstrates that I've been right about the company. A few things I am not. I'm not a cat. I am not an institutional investor, nor am I a hedge fund. I do not have clients and I do not provide personalized investment advice for fees or commissions. I'm just an individual whose investment in GameStop and posts on social media were based upon my own research and analysis. I grew up in Brockton, Massachusetts. My family was not wealthy. My father was a truck driver and my mom a registered nurse. I was one of three kids and the first in my family to earn a four-year college degree when I graduated from Stonehill College in 2009. That was not a good time to be looking for a job. From 2010 to 2017, I worked at a few startup companies, but there were significant periods when I was unemployed. I took an interest in the stock market, and even though I had very little money, I used those times to educate myself and learn more about investing. In 2019, after nearly two years unemployed, I accepted a marketing and financial education job at MassMutual. My wife Caroline and I were thrilled that I had an income and benefits. My job was to help develop financial education classes that advisors could present to prospective clients. I was not a stockbroker or a financial advisor. I did not talk to clients and I did not recommend stocks for them to buy. Before and after I joined Mass Mutual, I studied and followed stocks. One of those was GameStop. In early June of 2019, the price of GameStop stock declined below what I thought was its fair value. I invested in GameStop in 2019 and 2020 because, as I studied the company, I became more and more confident in my analysis. Two important factors, based entirely on publicly available information, gave me confidence that GameStop was undervalued. First, the market was underestimating the prospects of GameStop's legacy business and overestimating the likelihood of bankruptcy. I grew up playing video games and shopping at GameStop, and I plan to continue shopping there. GameStop stores still provide real value to consumers and reliable revenue for GameStop. Second, I believe that GameStop has the potential to reinvent itself as the ultimate destination for gamers within the rapidly growing $200 billion gaming industry. GameStop has a unique opportunity to pivot toward a technology-driven business. By embracing the digital economy, GameStop may be able to find new revenue streams that vastly exceed the value of its business. I am hardly the only person who has advocated these points. When I wrote and spoke about GameStop in social media with other individual investors, our conversations were no different from people in a bar or in a golf course or at home talking or arguing about a stock. Hedge funds and other Wall Street firms have teams of analysts working together to compile research and analyze shares of companies. Individual investors do not have those resources. Social media platforms like Reddit, YouTube, and Twitter are leveling the playing field. The idea that I use social media to promote GameStop stock to unwitting investors and influence the market is preposterous. My post did not cause the movement of billions of dollars into GameStop shares. It is tragic that some people lost money and my heart goes out to them. But what happened in January just demonstrates again that investing in public securities is extremely risky. As I said earlier, I consider myself and my family fortunate with our investment. When the stock price broke $20 in December, I knew my investment was a success. I was so happy to visit my family in Brockton for the holidays. The money will go such a long way for us. We had an incredibly difficult 2020. Most difficult was the tragic and unexpected loss of my sister, Sarah, in June. I am grateful to be in a position to give back to and support my family. As for what happened in January, others will have to explain it. It's alarming how little we know about the inner workings of the market. 
and I am thankful that this committee is examining what happened. I also want to say that I support retail investors' right to invest in what they want, when they want. I support the right of individuals to send a message based on how they invest. As for me, I like the stock. I'm as bullish as I've ever been on a potential turnaround for GameStop, and I remain invested in the company. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Yes, of course, I, 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 do, I believe it's an opportunity for investors to participate in the market just as institutionals participate. Okay, so actually the uh, business channels had a good question from one of the Reddit readers, which is, so you recommended uh, GameStop uh, before, would you buy their stock now at roughly 45? It started at 48 earlier today. You were talking about buying it and being happy uh, when it hit cross 20. So are you buying that stock today? Well, let me just say that in investing can be risky and my particular approach to investing is rather aggressive and may not be suitable for anyone else. But for me personally, yes. Uh -huh. So, yes or no, are you buying the stock? And For me well, personally, yes, I do find it's an attractive investment so my, at this price point. I, quick question. Uh, did you invest in GameStop uh, uh, because you were not aware of the uh, uh, of uh, payment for order flow? My investment in GameStop was based on the fundamentals. Thank you for the question, Congressman. I would say my expertise is in analyzing the business, the fundamentals of the business, not so much on the inner workings of the market. Um, I'm not so sure about legislation per se. What I would say is that increased transparency could help, that if someone like me could have a better understanding of how those types of things work, I feel as though it would be quite beneficial to retail investors. Congressman, I've been following GameStop for a number of years. I started to buy into it. Um, in June of 2019, most recently. Hey, so back then, what was the price of the stock when you started investing in it? At the time, it was in the ballpark of around $5 per share. Okay. And in your analysis, what did you think the proper price for the share was? Because you thought you were getting a good buy. Sure. At the time, I thought that the value of the business could be worth up to roughly $2 billion. Okay. But how much is that per share? Just let, uh, let's bring it back to the, you, you bought it five, you thought it was worth 10, 20? I felt as though that it could be worth at the time in the range of say 20 to $25 per share. Okay. And you continued to invest on and off through 2019 and 2020. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And you also, uh, you bought long, you bought some shares, but you also did some options trading, did you not? Correct, I did. And options trading is not really for the novice investor, is it? It is, it, it is a, a riskier investment, yes. Okay. In, um, on January 27th, I think the stock price hit $483 or something like that. Is that true? I believe it was in that area, yes. In your analysis, back when you started investing in the stock, did you ever see it being valued at $483 per share? At the time, I thought there was a, it was possible, but a very low probability, I thought. Okay, thank you. Um, just a couple more questions. In terms of the platforms where you uh, visited and, and discussed this stock with others. Um, one was the Reddit subreddit uh, uh, Wall Street Bets platform, correct? Correct. And um, at, at any given time, how many people were you talking to on that platform? I wasn't so much talking to anyone individually, but rather making posts on that public forum. That GameStop was an attractive stock. Yeah, early on, I had felt um, that it was an attractive investment opportunity, and I had shared some of my thoughts as to why that was. Did you discuss this on any other platforms? Are there any other kinds of uh, Reddit or other kinds of platforms that you talked about the stock? Yes, I have talked about the stock on some other platforms. Okay. Um, did you ever talk about the short sellers uh, that had uh, bet against this company? Yes, the topic did come up. And about when did that occur? Oh, since around the time I had begun investing in it, it was 
as uh, someone else has noted, was an exceptional level of short interest in the stock since the time I had started investing in it. Have you ever previously experienced or observed the type of restrictions Robinhood and other applications performed on January 28th? Thank you, Congressman. No, I have not. Uh, Mr. Gill, uh, as uh, was previously uh, noted at this hearing, uh, one of your colleagues uh, at the witness uh, table has as many as five people in the room with him. I, I guess, Mr. Gill, my first question for you is how many people are in the room with you right now? Mr. Gill? Zero, Congressman. Gone? That's, uh, that's, that's what I thought, Mr. Gill. And I just want to note uh, for the uh, entire committee that Mr. Gill is actually appearing before our panel by himself while many others are receiving significant Obviously, underestimating the sophistication and the independence of uh, of these uh, individual investors. Now, we've heard a lot of reasons for concern today. Some are legitimate, but also some proposed overreactions by members of Congress that could create even more problems. And what we saw was a movement of individuals investing to try to make money. I don't see what's wrong with that. Even if that motivation is fueled by a desire to stick it to a hedge fund they don't like. Mr. Gill, you're the only retail investor involved in this GameStop situation on our panel today. Why, I don't know, but you are. Yet members on the committee have hardly asked you any questions. We've heard from a lot of uh, the companies and funds involved in this event, but we've barely heard from the people that made this happen. Is there anything you would like to add to this hearing that you haven't been able to add yet, given that we're past the four hour mark on this hearing? I appreciate that, Congressman. I do. I don't have anything to add at this time, just that I would be the first to acknowledge that investing in stocks and options is incredibly risky. And it's so important for people to do their own thorough research before investing. But that said, I, I tend to agree with you that um, uh, folks should be able to freely express their express their views on a stock, and um, they should be able to, to to buy or not buy a stock based on those views that they may have. Hey, Mr. Gill, on that note, so how would you feel if these brilliant people that are asking you these questions today decided that uh, you should not take the risks that you uh, that you're making these thoughtful decisions on? Uh, what do you think about that? I would probably ask for an explanation, Congressman, um, and to try to understand their viewpoint as to why they might think that, and perhaps we'd be able to talk through it. I appreciate it, Mr. Gill. I think we need to value the right of the individual to make decisions for themselves. And it's fantastic to see so many people getting involved and participating in the greatest financial markets in the world. What do you think is the proper thing that should have happened? At some point, this thing got away from you and and went totally into the stratosphere. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on, on how this should have worked. Thank you, Congressman Lynch. I do know Westgate Mall quite well. Um, I would say that just to be clear, I had thought that maybe roughly 20 or $25 per share. Um, uh, I had thought that at that time, but investment theses, they evolve over time. As uh, the fundamental events change over time, it's important to update theses accordingly. And I had mentioned that it appeared as though the stock price had got a little bit ahead of itself last month, um, but there's a lot outstanding. There's a lot that has happened in recent months to suggest that GameStop could indeed turn around its business significantly. And one big element of that is indeed one of the largest inv investors uh, in GameStop, Ryan Cohen, and he has brought in some uh, some colleagues uh, that um, yeah, that could help him turn around this company. And uh, right, fair value could yeah, indeed. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to reclaim my time. I miss you.